on your prayer sheets and scriptures. We'll pray the antiphone. See, I have God for my help. Lord sustains my soul. I will sacrifice to you with willing heart and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. The church is one foundation. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. Elect from every nation, yet one for all the her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one bird, one holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace and doom. Though with a scornful wonder the world sees her oppressed, by schisms rent asunder, by heresies distressed. Yet saints their watch are keeping, their cry goes up along. And soon the night of weeping shall be the morn of song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good. 
good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the you alone are the most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all that you need show you have no, you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your majesty, your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency. And with much lenience, you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds, that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope, that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Lord, you are good and forgiven. You, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O oh Lord, to my prayer and attend to the sound of my pleading.
All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. You, O Lord, are a good, are a God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn towards me and have pity on me. Give me your strength, give your strength to your servant. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat, and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slave said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowd in parables. He spoke to them only in parables, 
to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then, dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds, are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evil doers they will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father whoever has ears ought to hear the Gospel of the Lord. Our Lord in the Gospel of Matthew just proclaimed, speaks three different parables. Those three parables, he says, are about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Sometimes it's important to reflect on the whole understanding of a parable. Some people think that parables are just nice little stories. If they were just nice little stories, why would they have crucified Jesus for telling nice little stories? The parables are to draw people in. One scripture scholar, last few days that I heard speaking about this, observed that though most of the time we understand parables as being in the Gospels, parables that our Lord told, and they are, there is a, there's evidence of parables being used in the Old Testament. One parable is when David has sinned in committing adultery with Bathsheba and killing her husband and then trying to cover it all up. And God sends Nathan, the prophet, to tell a parable to David. And Nathan tells this parable about a rich man who has many sheep and this poor man who has one little ewe lamb. And the rich man had some visitors. And rather than use one of his sheep, he took the one ewe lamb from the poor man, killed it, and made a meal for his rich visitors. David was drawn into this parable as parables draw us into the story. And then comes the twist. Then Nathan said, or David said, the man who has done this shall be punished. David, or Nathan says, you are the man. The twist is that the parable that Nathan told to David 
was about David. Jesus, in telling the parables, is telling the parables to all the people who will hear them, but he's especially telling them to those who will not listen, who will not welcome him into their lives, into their way of life. And because they realize, the scribes, the Pharisees, other persons realize those parables are told about us, then they want to kill Jesus. So as we listen to these parables, we need to have that in our mind, in our heart, as we hear the parables. Last Sunday we heard a parable, today we hear three. We will hear more parables in coming weeks. The Magnificat has a very interesting observation that says, notice that when Jesus begins this parable on the weeds and the wheat, he says, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. I have never recognized that line in all the years of my life. I have always understood that that parable, the kingdom of God, is like the weeds and the wheat. <laughs> no. Jesus says the kingdom of God is likened first and it is likened to the man who sows good seed in his field. Are you and I like that man who sows good seed in his field? First and foremost, we are to be members of God's kingdom and sow good seed in the field of our lives, in the field of the world around us. There's always the enemy. There's always the devil, the flesh, the world, that try to distract us and pull us away from God, from the kingdom of God. And there's always weeds in the field of wheat. This mixed bag of weeds and wheat is something that many of us are very aware of that we have but to look around us in the world and we see a mixed bag. We see a lot of good people. Unfortunately, we see a lot of good people created by God in his image and likeness who of their free will choose to do something very bad, very sinful, very harmful to others. They're good people, but they're choosing to do bad things. The enemy is created by God. The enemy chose to sow weeds in the field where the man who was likened to the kingdom of God sowing good seed. You and I are to sow that good seed in our lives and realize and in the world around us and realize that there are other persons and other forces in the world that are sowing weeds. In the parable, Jesus doesn't say to the slaves who, who asked them, yeah, go pull up all the weeds. No, leave them grow until harvest time. Ours is the task not to look around and see how many weeds are growing, not to spend all our time on trying to get rid of the weeds. The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. You and I are called to sow that good seed. Sometimes when we hear about the kingdom of heaven, when we hear about heaven, we think up there, it's heaven. God ascended into heaven. Jesus ascended into heaven. But you know, heaven, the church has often taught, is not so much a place, as a person, Jesus. When we are united with Jesus in a personal relationship with Jesus, we are welcoming Jesus into our heart and soul. 
And the more we welcome him, the more he will call us to himself and call us one day to eternity in heaven if we are faithful and let him work in us. Ours is the task to be faithful to him and to strive to deepen a relationship with the Lord. Jesus also tells a couple of other parables. He tells the parable about the mustard seed, and he tells the parable about the woman who uh, took a, uh, a little yeast and put it into three measures of flour, and the whole thing grew. Notice the small, small beginnings. A mustard seed, something very, very small, and yet it grows into a large shrub, a large bush, a little pinch of yeast takes effect on three measures of wheat flour. You and I might think, oh, just poor little me, I'm just one person. This is a big, bad world that we're in. There's nothing I can do. No. We are created by God good. And we, like that man who sowed good seed in the field, we are to do that, to go out in our daily lives and to sow that good seed. But no matter how much good seed we sow, just sow good seed. It starts a little at a time. It starts by daily prayer. It starts by listening to the Lord in our daily lives. It starts by inviting someone else, maybe in our family, a friend, to join us in prayer. Oh, we've never prayed before together. I don't know if I want to do this. I'm not comfortable. Start with a little prayer. Maybe it's a memorized prayer. Maybe it's a short, little, spontaneous prayer. Thank you for the beautiful day, Jesus. That's a beginning. That's a little mustard seed. Begin with a little. And speak about the beauty of God's gift of life. Every life is beautiful and given and kind, created by God. We are to proclaim that. We are to let him work in us as we uh, start from something very small and as we do his work in sowing his good word, his seed. This week, the church celebrates Natural Family Planning Awareness Week. Later this week, I think it's on Saturday the 25th, is the anniversary of Pope Paul VI issuing of the document of Humanae Vitae, of human life, teaching us about the dignity of human life and the great gift of fertility in husband and wife and how they use that together. Ours is the task to announce that great gift of life and of fertility and of natural family planning to those that we meet. Oh, that's not very acceptable in the world. We can't talk about that. That's not something we're supposed to say. A little seed, a little way, begin. First by praying, then by speaking. Then by pointing others that you know who are a little bit receptive, pointing them to various documents. There's an insert in the bulletin, a couple of different things in the bulletin to help us better understand natural family planning. There's much teaching by the church, but we begin in little ways. And we sow good seed. And we speak about God's gift of life. I conclude by saying what the Magnificat quotes, St. Gregory the Great said, Christ himself is the grain of mustard seed who planted in the garden of the sepulcher of the tomb grew into a great tree. He was a grain of seed when he died and a tree when he rose again, a grain of seed in the humiliation of the flesh, a tree in the power.
power of his majesty. We are to imitate our Lord and to be humble and to be patient, patient for that little seed to grow, patient while we wait for the weeds and the wheat to grow together until harvest time when God, who's in control of everything, will bring about judgment. Ours is patience. Ours is sowing the seed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on the Holy Spirit, who always intercedes for us in ways beyond our power. Let us turn to our Heavenly Father with our prayers. That baptize Christians everywhere, whatever their vocation in life, may be committed to transforming the world with the light of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. For all who have been made ill by the coronavirus and for all who care for them, and for the governments and the people of the world that we may experience the healing mercy of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. That those who serve in public office may renew their commitment to protect the God-given rights to which every human being is entitled, we pray to the Lord. That we may fulfill our call to be just and kind by building a society that shows mercy to the criminal, welcome to the stranger, and protection to the unborn, we pray to the Lord. That those who sow the weeds of falsehood or discord may be converted by God's grace to become instruments of truth and unity, we pray to the Lord. For favorable weather and moisture during the growing season, we pray to the Lord. For the poor and oppressed, for the sick and those who care for them, and for all, for all our friends and loved ones who need our prayers, we pray to the Lord. For the members of our parish and our families who have died, we pray to the Lord. 
for the intention of this Mass, for a special intention, and for our own intentions, united with Mary, the Mother of God, and all the saints, we add in silence. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, protect us from all evil. May we be committed to doing good, to sowing the seed of the kingdom of God, and receive in our patience the answer to all our prayers. We ask these prayers in union with the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. 
And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Elizabeth Ann Seton, Saint Camillus de Lillis, Saint Apollinaris, Saint Mary Magdalene, Saint James, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Mm -hmm. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. the communion antiphone. The Lord, the gracious, the merciful, has made a memorial of his wonders. He has gives food to those who fear him. Catholics who will be receiving Holy Communion are invited to come up to the communion rail. If you are unfamiliar with the communion rail, you may receive communion either kneeling at the rail or standing at the rail either on the tongue or in your hand. I ask you to please keep a social distance. If you live in the same home with the persons near you, you can kneel or stand beside them. Otherwise, there are three uh, uh, red or three blue uh, X's to help you see. And uh, after you receive, after one group receives communion, please wait for the next group to come forward until the ushers uh, clean the rail.
communion song. Jesus, our living bread, great gift from heaven sent. Fulfill the signs of old and the Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. You are invited and encouraged to take home the Scripture and Hymn uh, page and to reread the Scriptures and pray. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me and close to you bid me that with your saints I may be praising you forever and ever. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Closing hymn, God's blessing sends us forth. After you pick up a bulletin on the table in the narthex, please go outside and visit with people around you. Practice by starting to sow that little seed by visiting with other persons. God's blessing sends us forth, strengthen for our task on her, refreshed in soul and renewed in heart. May God with us remain through us in 
Spirit reign, let Christ be known to all mankind. God. Oh, may the seed of God's love now grow. May we in fruitful deeds gladly serve all your needs. And 